Hello and good afternoon. CSI 158, Section 841 and 847 students at Anne Arundel Community College. For the second eight-week term in the Cisco Networking Academy curriculum, which is the Routing and Switching Essentials course. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial will be on Packet Tracer Activity 9.2.1.10, where we're going to configure and then verify standard ACLs. As you can see here, we have our addressing table, and our objectives are going to be to plan an ACL implementation, configure, apply, and verify a standard ACL. And remember, a standard ACL, you want to try to apply that ACL as close to the destination as possible. All right, so let's keep that in mind as we work through this act activity here. So it says investigate the current network configuration. Before applying any ACLs to a network, it's important to confirm that you have full connectivity. So verify that the network has full connectivity by choosing a PC and pinging other devices in the network. All right, let's see if we can successfully ping here. So from PC3, let's try to ping PC2, PC1, and the web server. So we'll come over here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ping PC1, which is 192.168.11. I'm sorry, dot 10, dot 10. And hopefully we'll be able to successfully ping. Chances are it's going to have to ARP out, so we should miss at least the first ping and then have success, and we do. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can ping PC2, which is dot 11, dot 10. And again, not on the local network segment, so going to have to ARP out and there we go and finally can I ping my web server which is 192.168.20.254 and that's hanging off of switch 0 alright so we've got two timeouts and it looks like we do not have connectivity out to our web server so it says can we ping other devices on the network? You should be able to successfully ping every device. Let me make sure we don't have a typo there. 192.168.20. Ah, we have a typo. All right, 254. Apologize for that. So again, we should miss the first ping, and then the subsequent ping should work. There we go. Okay. So we do have full connectivity throughout our environment here. So let's close down PC3. Whoops. All right, the next step says evaluate two network policies and plan ACL implementations. The following network policies are implemented on Router 2. The 192.168.11.0 network is not allowed access to the web server on the 192.168.20.0 network. And so here's Router 2, and what they're saying is the 192.168.11 network is not allowed to access the web server. And then all other access is permitted. So to restrict the access from the 192.168.11.0/24 network to the web server without interfering with other traffic, an ACL must be created in R2. The access list must be placed on the outbound interface to the web server. A second rule, a second rule must be created on R2 to permit all other traffic. And then again, we have another policy here. The following network policies are going to be implemented on R3. So R3 is going to say that the 192.168.10 network is not allowed to communicate with the 192.168.30.0 network. So this network here, right? So chances are we're going to be on this interface, which is closest to our source, or I'm sorry, for the router 3, we're going to go try to get as close to the source as we can. So all other access is going to be permitted. So to restrict access from the 192.168.10 network, Without interfering with other traffic, it needs to be created on R3. The ACL must be placed on the outbound interface to PC3, which will be this interface here on the router. Okay, so part two, let's configure and apply and verify a standard ACL. So step one, configure and apply a numbered standard ACL on router two. So let's open up router two. We'll go to our CLI, and we're gonna go from user exec and a privilege exec and then in the global config mode and it says create an ACL using the number 1 on router 2 with a statement that denies access to the 192.168.20.0 network from the 192.168.11 network and so that would be access list and use the number 1 so we're going to deny traffic 
and it's going to be the traffic that's going to be coming from the 192.168.11 network. All right, so we're going to do 192.168.11.0, and then our wildcard mask is going to be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. And so basically this access list says deny anything coming from a source of 192.168.11.0, that entire slash 24. Okay, so if I did a do show access list, whoops, you can see that there's access list one and there's our deny statement. All right, so now by default, the access list denies all traffic at the end. There's an implicit deny all. So we need to make sure that we have a statement here for access list one that is going to permit any. And then the last statement is always that implicit deny. All right, so for the ACL to actually filter traffic, it must be applied to some router operation. So apply the ACL by placing it for outbound traffic on the gig zero zero interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go int gig 00, zero and we're going to do an IP access group 1 and again this 1 here, right, corresponds to the access list number. So if our access list number was 99, we would be saying IP access group 99. So you want to make sure that they match, okay, and then we're also going to apply this in the outbound direction, right? So this will be for traffic coming through the switch that's actually getting routed, internally switched on the, uh, I'm sorry, coming through the router that's being internally switched on the router, which means it's going to, the traffic's going to be routed. All right. So we've got that set up, and now we're going to configure and apply a numbered ACL on router 3. So let's do an end here, and let's do a write mem. Save our configuration, and now we'll pull up router number all right so from user exec and a privilege exec and then into global config mode and very similar right so we're going to create an ACL using the number one on router three with a statement that denies access to the 192.168.30.0 slash 24 network from PC1 right which is the 192.168.10 network so let's go ahead and do get our access list set up here. Access list one, deny 168.10.0. So from the source, right? So we're going to deny all traffic from this source network. And it's going to be a slash 24. We need to make sure that we get our access list one permit any, right? So that's the sort of the you know allow everybody else to get through. And then the final statement is the implicit deny all which we don't actually enter, and if I do a do show access list, right, you'll notice that you never even see the implicit deny. So it's not even there, right, or it doesn't show up. It's there, but it doesn't show up. You don't actually see it. It's assumed that that's going to be happening. Okay, so now we're going to go to int gig 00, just like we did on the previous router, and we're going to apply that access list with the access group command, again, one to match, and then we type out for the outbound direction. I'm going to go ahead and save the configuration. So now you can see our score is 100 out of 100. Again, this is a very easy exercise. You're actually given the commands that you need to enter in, but a great introduction into ACL. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to verify the connectivity. So on R2 and R3, enter the show access list command and verify the ACL configurations. And so we did that. Enter the show run or show IP interface gig 00. So let's do show IP interface gig 00. Right? And what are we looking for here? So we're looking for access list information. So outgoing access list or inbound access list. So as you can see here, the outgoing access list is access list 1. Right? So it has been set. And if I were to do a show run, we would also see on that interface we have an IP access group one out and so that interface is I'm sorry that interface also has the access list applied same interface different way to look at it okay so with the two ACLs in place network traffic is restricted according to the policies detailed in part one so use the following tests to verify alright so let's close this down and I'm gonna pull up 192.168.10.10 which is our PC1 
and let's check. So if I type in ping 192.168.11.10, and that's over to PC2, that traffic works. So from PC1 to PC2, I succeed. Let me try to get the web server from PC1. That's going to go out to .20.254, and that should succeed as well. And now we're going to try a ping from PC2.11.10 over to the web server, and this should fail. So let's take a look here. So if I type ping 192.168.20.254, and we get a destination host, host unreachable. And that's because on router 2, on the GIG00 interface, the GIG00 interface, which is this interface here, we've placed an access list that says, and you can see it right over here, deny any source traffic coming from the 192.168.11.10 network, and that happens to be us right here, right? And so this is actually working as expected. So back over to PC1, so PC1 is going to try to ping 30.10, which is PC3. And again, destination host unreachable. And that's because we've placed an ACL on router 3's gig00 interface, which should be this interface right here. And it is. And that interface says block all traffic from the PC1 subnet. So that should fail, and it does. All right, and finally, we're going to go from PC2 over to PC3. Because remember, from PC2 to PC3, we shouldn't have any issues. 168.30.10, and it works like a champ. And now, let's go from PC3 to the web server, and then we're also going to do something else. So if I ping 192.168.20.254, you can see PC3 can ping the web server with no problems. What if PC3 tries to ping PC1? One, what happens? So that's an outbound ACL, right? So this is an outbound ACL here. So the traffic coming this way is going to succeed, right? However, traffic from PC1 that's coming back, your ICMP echo reply, when that traffic comes back, the source IP in that packet is going to be from the 192.168.10 network and it's going to get picked up right here right by that ACL that we created okay so again a, a great introductory ACL exercise to give you an idea as to how ACLs work how and when and where you would apply those so this has been Packet Tracer Activity 9.2.1.0 I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you all this week